We have seen that we can bypass the gibbers otherwise result in the special domain called the single peak domain and we have also uh, discussed one example pick the leftmost peak or the uh, rightmost peak or the median peak which is a mechanism which is uh, onto and uh, strategy proof but not a dictatorial one. So in this uh, module we are going to look at that specific mechanism in, in some further detail and we will show that uh, this, is, I, 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 this is indeed strategy proof. This class of mechanisms is actually strategy proof. And the class of mechanism that we are going to talk about, they are named as median voter social choice function. It's a class of social choice functions. So how is it defined? So it is defined in the following way. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a social choice function which is mapping from this restricted domain of the single peak preferences to the set of alternatives. Uh, if there exists a collection of n minus 1 peaks and we'll uh, call these peaks as the phantom peaks um, the name being phantom because uh, it, it is not a real peak so it's not an agent uh, who, who is having this kind of peak rather it, it can be chosen arbitrarily and based on that we actually uh, define what is the median so the social choice function is actually defined in terms of uh, in particular it could be um, uh, it could be indexed by B itself that is given a specific B a set of uh, phantom uh, phantom peaks we are picking the median of those peaks and also the peaks of the players so how can we actually uh, represent the uh, the common things that we have actually discussed so for instance if you have um, the, the peaks the phantom peaks all uh, clustered to, uh, together on the left then you know that all the n minus one peaks are on the leftmost position. Then the first position uh, of uh, first of this uh, agent peaks is going to be the median of this collection of b as well as the peaks of the players. So in some sense, if we pick this b carefully, we can actually create the leftmost peak as your outcome. Uh, alternatively, if all the peaks are on the rightmost position, that is by leftmost and rightmost, I mean uh, the ones that are uh, uh, that can have the, the maximum negative so if, if in the domain there is a leftmost position uh, there cannot be any agent peak which is uh, even further left to it and there is no agent peak which is further right to 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 it then if we pick all those uh, phantom peaks to be the rightmost peaks then we know that the the rightmost agent peak is going to be the median of this collection and therefore we can also reproduce that rightmost peak uh, picking uh, mechanism using this uh, this description of the median voter and uh, similarly if you have uh, if you want to pick the the, the median of the agent peaks uh, then you can actually pick half of them so half the uh, uh, phantom uh, peaks to be on the left half the phantom peaks on the right of course depending on whether n is even or odd you can adjust accordingly but that will give you the the phantom peak uh, which is uh, uh, which is the median of all the agent peaks and uh, this uh, uh, this uh, outcome uh, the outcome of this uh, mechanism need not always be a agent peak uh, by by choosing arbitrary uh, uh, phantom peaks you can also have a uh, have a phantom peak as the median of this collection of uh, peaks here. All right, so here we are. Uh, what I am calling median, where the, the computation is the median with respect to the common ordering, the, the common ordering of all these uh, uh, of all these alternatives. We have already defined that uh, a uh, a single peak preference is defined with respect to this common ordering over these alternatives, and that is uh, that is this one. And we are uh, computing the median with respect to that uh, ordering. In this uh, uh, examples set of examples, we are assuming that they are all located on a real line. Now that is the that is the reason why we have uh, introduced phantom voters so that we can uh, uh, look at all these uh, mechanisms collectively. So it's a, it's not only a single social choice function; it's a collection of social choice functions. Uh, but they have this property that uh, by adjusting the 
phantom peaks appropriately you can uh, output different kinds of uh, uh, medians different kinds of uh, peaks as the final outcome now here is a, a important result due to mula uh, 1980 every median voter social choice function that is every social choice function which uh, belongs to this class that we have defined uh, just now is strategy proof so that is one uh, important result and it is not very difficult to uh, uh, prove and I will not uh, do the proof formally because it's it's in the very similar way that we have argued in the in the previous module uh, how uh, you can argue that a median voter so median uh, peak or a leftmost peak or a rightmost peak is strategy proof is uh, because the only way an agent can alter this median is by going on the other side of the median and uh, presumably because this is a single peak preference if uh, the only way it can uh, change that median is by reporting its peak to be on the other side of the median which essentially uh, uh, is less preferred than the current outcome and that is essentially the uh, idea of this proof uh, again. Now um, notice that uh, this is a very special property of median and mean uh, or any other kind of stat statistical measures of uh, all these peaks does not have this property. In fact you can manipulate means and you can construct one example. So let us now uh, go into the, a, a little further detail of this uh, uh, of these mechanisms and uh, let us look at what we uh, what are the structure of Pareto efficient mechanisms and here we have a claim let us uh, let us imagine that uh, P min and P max are the the leftmost and the rightmost peaks and again by leftmost and rightmost we mean the, the common ordering uh, uh, over all these alternatives um, so if they are the leftmost and the rightmost peak according to that common ordering then F will be Pareto efficient if and only if this uh, uh, outcome of that social choice function lives within that minimum and maximum point. So uh, to draw a picture, so let's say P mean was here and P max is somewhere above and uh, if you pick any f of p that must lie somewhere in between it can be the p max itself it can be the p mean also but it, it will never be outside it so uh, because there's an if and only if condition we'll prove it in both directions so the first is the the forward direction or the only if direction so we can prove it uh, via contradiction so let's let's assume that this uh, f p is uh, not uh, in, in inside this so it can be either on the higher side or on the lower side but in in both these cases what we immediately observe is because the peaks are somewhere here so uh, the agent peaks are always living somewhere in between um, uh, if you pick uh, so if the FP is somewhere here then it is uh, is strictly worse than uh, than the than their current peaks for all the agents and that is uh, certainly dominated uh, alternative. So let us look at the other direction, uh, the if direction. That is, if FP uh, lies between these two uh, points, uh, P min and P max, then it must necessarily be Pareto efficient. And that argument is also uh, quite straightforward. Then uh, you cannot really find a condition that uh, there exists some B which is strictly preferred by all the agents over this current outcome FP. All the agents uh, on the left hand side uh, of, uh, of this uh, so between P mean and this F of P they prefer uh, they have their own choices which is more preferred than uh, FP possibly uh, but there are some alternatives of, of for which it is on the other side so you cannot really find another alternative one consolidated alternative so let's say you be, uh, pick some B from here uh, and if you try to see if it is uh, better than uh, FP by all the agents, that is not true because uh, because a B is on the other side, it is strictly worse than FP for all the agents who speak are on the left hand side. Similarly, if B falls here, the, uh, for all the agents which are on the right hand side, for them B is strictly worse than FP. 
so we will never find uh, this kind of an example where uh, uh, where this fp is pareto dominated and therefore the uh, the, uh, the condition of pareto efficiency is vacuously true okay so uh, in the um, in the gibbs hadbert setting we have uh, discussed certain properties and we are going to look at those properties uh, the implications of those properties with strategy proofness in this uh, current setup of uh, single peak preferences as well. The first uh, condition that we are going to look at is monotonicity. The similar results like uh, like this uh, uh, gibbs hadbert setting holds here too, even though the proofs, uh, uh, proofs uh, differ uh, quite a bit. So uh, the let us look at the relationship between the strategy proofness and monotonicity and uh, look at the easier uh, easier direction so strategy proofness implies monotonicity and uh, if you recall the proof we did we uh, transition from one um, uh, preference profile to another preference profile by changing one agent's profile at a time and the same proof will hold even for this setup so there is nothing uh, very interesting uh, in in this direction but uh, in particular, when we are talking about the reverse direction, that if f is monotone, um, whether it is strategy proof or not, that particular proof is not so straightforward, and the same proof that we have done earlier will not hold, and it will not hold because of the fact that it, it was a constructive proof. We constructed it in a way that if there was a, a violation of uh, strategy proofness, that means b was more preferred. Uh, so B is when the agent is manipulating and getting an alternative B and when it is not manipulating it is getting uh, A and that was preferred by some agent I uh, in, in that setup that uh, and uh, then we have constructed a different preference profile P double prime where B was on the top for that agent and A was directly below this and this was possible in the unrestricted domain in the gibbard sutherbert setting but in the uh, in the single peak preferences so you can imagine that the b could be somewhere here and a can be anywhere else so a can be here or here uh, based on what what is their relative uh, position in this uh, in this total ordering remember that this uh, the the common ordering you cannot alter in in single peak so you will have to also take care of all the intermediate uh, uh, alternatives which are lying between A and B. And therefore we cannot just uh, pick B and A right after each other because then uh, you will also have to argue what happens to these alternatives here. Because they, they will certainly in a, in a single peak preference they will certainly be uh, between A and B and we'll have to uh, argue that so what i'm trying to suggest is that the the reverse in order to show the reverse direction uh, you will have to also uh, do a possibly different construction or provide an counter example maybe maybe the, uh, this uh, this implication is not true at all in that case you can you should be able to give an example where it is uh, it is monotone but not strategy proof let me give you the answer the the reverse implication is also true but uh, the uh, the construction will be a little different so uh, i leave that as a as a homework exercise so the next result that we have already shown in the case of uh, uh, gibbs hadbert that is uh, the unrestricted domain um, about ontoness unanimity and pareto efficiency uh, as before the pareto efficiency is the the strictest notion and it implies unanimity and ontoness uh, that holds even here too but uh, the the reverse implication that whether ontoness will imply unanimity and unanimity will imply pair to efficiency under the condition that uh, this uh, uh, social choice function is strategy proof that requires some amount of work and that is exactly what we are going to do here and that will also give you an idea that how we are going to do the construction uh, in the single peak preferences we will also have to take care of certain additional things because there is a restriction in the in the domain Okay, so um, let us assume, so all that we need to show, to show the uh, this equivalence, that is, um, we know that Pareto efficiency implies unanimity, implies ontoness, so strategy proofness plus this will all also imply that. Under strategy proofness, to show the reverse direction, we need under strategy proofness, uh, this ontoness will also imply Pareto efficiency. 
So let us try to prove this via contradiction. So let's assume that f is strategy proof and on to but not Pareto efficient. So what does that not Pareto efficient mean? It's a, it means that uh, there exists a pair of alternatives A, B such that A is uh, strictly preferred over B for all the agents yet the, uh, the mechanism has chosen uh, this outcome to be B so which is Pareto dominated by all the agents. So since this preference is a single peak, so we know that A is strictly above B, so maybe somewhere here, so A is strictly preferred over B, uh, then there must exist another alternative. And this is an implication, think about it, uh, of the single peakness, that there must exist some other C, which is strictly preferred over B. And uh, it is also a neighboring, uh, uh, neighboring alternative. So in that uh, ordering, uh, the common ordering of all these alternatives C just leaves next to B. I mean of course A could have been on the other side of B as well in that case C would also be on the other side but it does not really matter. Uh, C is a neighboring uh, alternative uh, of B and uh, that also is strictly preferred over B and here we are only considering discrete alternatives so it's not con continuous. So in particular C can be A itself, that is also a feasibility. If A and B are neighbors, then A, A and B, then our job becomes a little easier. But in general, there could always be a C which is strictly preferred over B. And that is not only for agent I, it should be for every agent. Uh, and because the, for every agent, the, uh, the, uh, the preference is a single bit. All right, so now uh, we also know from the uh, definition of ontoness uh, because we have assumed that it is strategy proof and onto. So uh, from ontoness uh, for this particular C that we have uh, found uh, just now, there must exist some uh, preference profile P prime such that the social choice outcome of that P prime is actually equal to C. So that is an implication of, uh, uh, of uh, ontoness. Now we are ready to construct our P double prime. So what does P double prime do? It picks C to be the topmost one and the B to be the next second alternative. And this is possible because these two are neighboring, uh, the neighboring alternatives. So we can look at all these uh, preferences which has C as peak and B as the second uh, alternative uh, in, that, uh, in that preference order for every agent I in N. Now the proof is very simple. We look at two different transitions from P to P double prime and we apply monotonicity and here we are using that the fact that monotonicity and strategy proofness are equivalent here also. Then you can conclude and uh, yeah this is very similar to previous one. I don't want to spend time on that. So P double prime will also be B because in P the outcome was B right. So in, in P the outcome was B. Uh, so you have B here because it is uh, uh, satisfying monotonicity. You can uh, convince yourself that the relative position of B is only getting better in P double prime. Similarly, if you are going from P prime, so P prime is this alternative where C is uh, on top. So C is the, the outcome and because C is moving to the topmost position, of course, uh, its relative position is also increasing using monotonicity. You can conclude that this is uh, this is equal to C. The outcome in P double prime is C. And here is a contradiction because here it is B, here it is C and B and C are not the same. So we have proved this result that uh, um, so we have started with a, uh, uh, with an assumption uh, not PE so but we have proved that this is uh, supposed to be PE. So then we have actually proved this equivalence which we had for the unrestricted domain but this implication is also true even in this uh, uh, single peak preferences domain. So now we are uh, interested in designing non-dictatorial social choice functions. So the, uh, the non-dictatorial social choice functions uh, we need to define one additional property called anonymity. So what is anonymity? Anonymity says that the outcome is insensitive to agent identities. I mean the name itself is quite uh, um, uh, uh, self-explanatory that it is not uh, looking at the agent identities. It is just looking at their preferences and making the decision based on that. So the permutation of, uh, so we'll have to define for anonymity uh, something called a permutation of the agents. So let's look at sigma 
which is picking one of these agents and possibly renaming that uh, the same agent with a different name. So maybe agent 1 is now called agent 3, agent 2 is called agent 1 and so on. Now uh, what we are going to do is we, we are going to apply a permutation sigma to a preference profile B to construct another profile. Uh, now the how is this permutation done? The preference of I goes to the agent sigma of I which is the transformed version of that agent in this new profile and uh, we are going to denote this new profile as P superscript sigma. So let us look at an example to understand what, what it means. So suppose we have three agents and sigma is following it maps 1 to 2, uh, 2 to 3 and 3 to 1. So if you, if you look at the original preference profile which looked, at, uh, looked as this, now uh, 1 has become 2. So the same preference profile will go now go to the uh, agent 2 in the new game, in the new uh, transform game. 2 will go to 3. So the 2's preference has gone to the agent 3's preference and 3's has become 1. So 3 has become 1. So that is the uh, the meaning of uh, this uh, permutation of this uh, permutation of the preference profile. Uh, now the social outcome should not alter due to agent renaming. So what we have done, we haven't changed anything in the population. The the same population remains. We have just renamed the uh, the agents. And the idea of anonymity is that the social outcome that we are going to uh, uh, get from you know, from the from this population should not alter due to the agent renaming. So formally the social choice function f uh, is anonymous if for every profile p and for every permutation. So this is very important to look at any possible permutation of sigma. Then the uh, in this new world, so in this world the social choice outcome that was there should be the same as the social choice outcome in the original original game. Now you can uh, answer this question that uh, can you find an example of a non-anonymous social choice function and the hint is that we, we have actually seen that in the past. Think in the lines of uh, uh, the Gibbard's other weight. So if you if you tie um, the, the outcome, let's say an outcome, uh, if we define our social choice function in the following way that it will be the, uh, the most preferred alternative of player number one and now you are actually tying it to a very specific player so if the player so if you alter these players uh, using this uh, permutation of these players then what uh, the new player one has a topmost alternative of b while in the original game the topmost alternative of player one was a so you can you can begin to see that uh, uh, the social choice functions uh, which actually tie to a very specific player let's say player one and its top alternative that is not going to be anonymous and you we know a name for that that is a dictatorial social choice function dictatorial social choice function is not anonymous and by uh, uh, we'll see in the next module that uh, by introducing this uh, notion of anonymity and enforcing this we are actually ruling out those uh, dictatorial allocations.